iPadOS 14 isn't as big of an update as iPadOS 13 was, but there's a lot of low-hanging fruit taken care of by iPadOS 14. This video is meant to be a walkthrough of key features of iPadOS 14. In other videos coming very soon, I'll be covering third-party app updates, in-depth shortcuts tutorials, and a secret project I've been working on, so be sure to subscribe. But let's go ahead and get into the walkthrough. The iPhone got major home screen improvements, the ability to hide home screens, the app library, and to place widgets anywhere. The iPad, well, didn't get any of that, but it did get the ability to use the new widgets, which is good. You can add widgets by long pressing in that area and you'll get the jiggle mode. In the top left corner, there's a plus button you can go ahead and tap on, and this will bring up the widget library. You can browse through here and add any widget you want, Third-party apps can also update to support the new widget, which you will find here as well. To add a widget, go ahead and find the app you want. Here, there will be multiple size widgets. There's a 1x1, one one, a 2x1, two and a 2x2. Two two. Find the size that you think works for you and go ahead and add it. Some apps, and a lot of third-party apps that I've seen, have multiple different styles of widgets. So if we look at Timery, they have different widgets here. They have ones that'll show off your current time tracking, how much time you tracked over the day, and time trackers that you can launch to start tracking time. When adding a widget to the home screen on the iPad, you'll see a gray box. This is the new pinned section. So before in iPadOS 13, you should be able to have as many widgets as you want pinned to that left side. And then if you had something that wasn't pinned, you could scroll up and it would reveal those widgets. Now with iPadOS 14, you just get this two by two grid, which personally I don't think is enough, especially on the bigger iPad Pros like the 12.9. There's plenty of space to have more pinned widgets, but you can always add more to the bottom. And if you scroll up, they'll stay there until you pull back down. One of the things I like the most about the new widget style is the ability to stack them. So if you have two widgets that are the same size, they have to be the same size, you can drag them and then drop them on top of each other. And this will create a stack. You can then flick through them and rotate through the different widgets in there. But there's also the new ability to create smart stacks. So if you tap on this while in the editing mode, you can edit the stack. There's a feature in here that'll be on by default called smart rotation. The OS will try and determine what appropriate widget it should show given a few different parameters. But if you don't like this, you could just turn it off right here. One nice thing is you can actually still add the old widgets for now. So if there's something you really like about the old widget, you can still add that. But I wouldn't be surprised if those go away in iPadOS 15. Search got an entirely new rebuilt engine and UI. Apple and iPadOS 14 is really focusing on using space appropriately. And Search is the first spot that we see that. When invoking search, still by hitting either command space or pulling down on the home screen, you see a more Mac-like Spotlight UI, which I'm really happy about. I actually really like the way Spotlight works on the Mac, and I'm happy to see that Apple is starting to adopt that on the iPad. Just like on the previous search, when you start typing, it will dynamically start showing results based on what you are typing and what it thinks you want. I really wish Apple would add a way to trigger search while being in an app without having a hardware keyboard present. There is still no way to do that. When running a shortcut from search, it no longer opens the shortcuts UI. It will run in a notification at the top. This makes running shortcuts anywhere in the OS a lot easier. Plus, I have an exciting secret project that I've been working on about this. One thing a lot of people don't know about the iPad search, even in iPadOS 13 and previous versions, is you can ask it common questions like math equations, measurement conversions, and questions like how far away is the sun? Search is more than just opening apps. I use it to open folders and files, run shortcuts, and ask questions. Siri also got a new compact UI and now appears as a ball in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. It'll display any text or results right above it. A big benefit of this is you can still interact with the UI of the iPad while Siri is doing its thing. One thing I really wish Apple would add is the ability to tap on Siri and just start typing or invoke Siri via some sort of keyboard shortcut and start typing results. That would work a lot better when being in a public space. 
Now there is the accessibility option of using type to Siri, but that turns off the voice option. So I would love to see those two features kind of merge. Shortcuts got some big upgrades. I'm gonna be doing a lot more shortcuts videos in the coming months. Uh, one of those is gonna be a shortcuts 101 video where I cover all the basics. Another one is gonna be how I use background automations on my iPhone. But in this video, I'm gonna cover some new features that I'm really excited about. First, there are folders now. I am so excited about this. I'm somebody that has quite a few shortcuts and this gives me a much better way of organizing them. On the left hand side, there's the new sidebar in shortcuts. So you can kind of go through here and jump to a specific folder that you want. There's also smart categories for share sheet shortcuts, Apple Watch shortcuts, background automations and more. Next up is some editor changes. When we first go in to create a new shortcut, you'll notice the sidebar is now on the right hand side. I think this is a little weird considering everywhere else in the OS, the sidebar is on the left side. It's, it, it, it's something I got used to pretty quickly, but it's very strange. But there is now the ability to copy and paste actions. So if you tap on the icon of an action, you get the ability to copy it. And then you can tap on an icon of another action and you can paste that action that we copied above or below it. This is extremely handy now because Shortcuts now has multi-window support. So that means I could be working on two different shortcuts at once. So if I'm working on a really long shortcut that has multiple parts or things like that, I can copy and paste actions from different shortcuts into this big shortcut. But one thing I would like to see is the ability to select a range of shortcuts and copy those and then paste them over. Cause right now you can only do one action at a time. Okay, back to widgets for a minute. The shortcuts widget is one of my favorite widgets of all time. It gives you the ability to run shortcuts right inside the widget. And even with the iPad OS 13 version and all the way back to the days of it was workflow, a lot of shortcuts you could run right in the widget without ever opening the app. But iPad OS 14 takes it a bit further as well now. Now when we run a shortcut from the widget, it runs in that notification bar, just like in search. But if there's like an ask for input action or something that would have normally opened the shortcuts app, it will now just ask us right in that notification. So if I'm using my new task shortcut, Shortcut, I can run that and type a new task right from the home screen. The shortcuts widget is now based on folders. So if we go into edit the widget here, you can see here we can pick from different folders to show. This is fine, I guess. It's okay. I really wish there was a way to customize the widget so I could basically say I want this shortcut here, that shortcut there, and this shortcut. I organize my shortcuts by category. So I have a task category, a note category, etc. I really would love to have a widget that was like, okay, here's my new task, here's my new note, here's my clipboard manager, et cetera. The Apple Pencil got the biggest upgrade when it comes to iPad OS 14. There's a ton of new stuff that you can do with it. First up, when drawing a shape like a circle, a star, a rectangle, an arrow, whatever, you can hold the Apple Pencil for a second and it will correct your drawing to be a perfect shape. This is great for somebody like me that just can't draw. I was able to sketch out a lot of ideas, including redoing this whole office because of this. Handwriting with the Apple Pencil also got a big improvement too. You can now highlight that text just as if it was typed text. So you can long press on it and highlight that text. Once highlighted, you can cut or copy and then paste it anywhere else. You could also drag it and move it around in your document or drag and drop it and put it in an entirely different document. Stuff like addresses, dates, phone numbers are now tappable links. So if you have a date, you can tap on it and create a new calendar event right from that date. There's also a new system color picker that's pretty cool. If you're somebody that draws or does a lot of art with the Apple Pencil, I think this will be really handy for you. But the biggest feature is probably Scribble. Scribble actually started off as an Apple Watch feature, but is now being brought to the iPad with Apple Pencil support. With Scribble, you can go into any text field that you would normally have to type in, and you can handwrite in that field, and it'll convert your handwritten text to type text. I'm somebody that has atrocious handwriting, but it does a really good job even with my bad handwriting. When writing, just put the insertion point wherever you want your text to go and just start writing anywhere. This will translate your handwritten text into type text. It's a very impressive feature. If you mess something up, just scratch it out and it'll erase it. 
To highlight something, just circle it, and then you can cut, copy, or paste. And then down at the bottom, there's even a menu for Scribble where you can undo, redo, or bring up the software keyboard. I'll be completely honest, on my main iPad, I really wasn't using Scribble that much. I have the Magic Keyboard on my main iPad pretty much all the time, and that's my favorite input method for the iPad. But where I found this to be incredibly handy was on my 11 inch iPad Pro. I use this iPad for a little bit of light note taking and task management, but mostly entertainment, surfing the web, buying things, stuff like that, just a normal tablet usage. And Scribble in this case was incredibly handy. When I was just sitting at the table, I would take out the Apple Pencil and I would just use Scribble in the search bar so I could just like write Amazon and then it would take that and put it in the search bar in Safari. Or if I opened up search and I wanted to open an app, I could just type, write Net Newswire and it would convert that to type text and then I could open Net Newswire right with Scribble. People that use an iPad that don't always have a hardware keyboard attached to it are going to get the most out of Scribble in my opinion. This is where Scribble can really shine. The Files app got some improvements as well. First up, I want to say, and, and I don't think Apple publicly talked about, but it feels a lot more stable than iPadOS 13. For me in iPadOS 13, files was constantly crashing and I would get like these weird like preview not available errors and things like that. It, it feels so much more stable in iPadOS 14. So to the files team, great job. But when you first open files, you'll notice there's some UI improvements. The big one to me is the toolbar. You no longer have to pull down where all the files and folders are to create a folder or get the menu to change the view. There's now those buttons right at the top. When you tap on that toolbar menu, there's now a drop down menu with all those options there. This is a lot like the contextual menus when you long press on something. If you go into settings, iPad storage, and if an app stores contents through the files app, it will show the specific files and how much space it's taking now. You can delete those files in this area. There is also a search feature for finding a specific app now as well. Apple's productivity apps got some updates as well. Not as big as iPadOS 13 where they completely redid reminders, but there's a lot of quality of life improvements here. Calendar got the new toolbar option up at the top, and there's also a new system date picker. So you can pick a date from a calendar instead of having to spin a wheel. But if you did like the spinning the wheel mechanic, it's still there, you could do it on the time. And if you use a magic keyboard, you can do it from the trackpad as well. Notes. Notes probably got my favorite upgrade. No more paper texture background. There's now a new share sheet design, but I'm not entirely sure it's the share sheet because it's not the same icon. The three dot menu or the ellipses menu up at the top, you can tap on that and it has a few options here. There are four buttons pinned right to the top, scan, print, lock, and delete. Then there are the notes options below that. But if you want the traditional share sheet, hit send a copy. That'll bring up the traditional share sheet and you can send that note to wherever you want. Notes also got all the Apple Pencil improvements as well. So you have all the handwriting recognition and the shape drawing features as well. Reminders got some great updates as well. If you have a shared list, you can assign tasks to specific people. And there's even a new section to show you the reminders that are assigned to you. Lists can now have emojis as their icon, which is great. Like I've showed how I organize my task manager a lot on here. And I always have emojis on lists or projects or whatever that task manager calls them. It's a great way to kind of break things up and give different lists or projects a different feel to them. Tasks now have a smart suggestion option. Down at the bottom when writing out a task, it suggests options like date or a list that this task belongs to. You can also edit multiple reminders at once now. Hit the three dot menu at the top and then tap on select reminders. Here you can select as many reminders as you want. You can delete, edit them, whatever you need to do. Safari got a few updates as well. Fave icons are now on by default. There's also a handy new shortcut. If you have multiple Safari windows, you can now merge them into one window. You can do this by long pressing on the new window button and then tap on the merge all windows button. Safari also got some really great privacy and security updates as well. There's now a privacy information tab where you can see what is trying to track you on a given website. 
There's also a handy new password monitoring feature. So if you have any password stored in Keychain from a website that got breached, it will now notify you about that and it'll ask you to change your password. A really great feature as far as security goes. I talked earlier about how a big theme of iPadOS 14 is using space appropriately, but that's also about making apps feel like they belong on the iPad and they're not just big iPhone apps. Apple Music and Photos are probably the best examples of this. They now have this new sidebar feature instead of having the tabs at the bottom. What the sidebar gives users is the ability to have more on the side there to pick from instead of just five icons at the bottom. I personally really like this design. It's really clicked with me over the summer and I am super happy Apple decided to do this for a few reasons. First, it makes the apps feel more desktop-like. And when you have an 11 inch iPad or a 12 inch iPad or whatever, it really makes it feel like these apps belong here now and they're not just big iPhone apps. If you put these apps in split view, it does go back to the compact view, which I think is fine. Like, because at that point you are using a smaller version version of that app. But when using the app in full screen, you have that sidebar and it's really nice. I hope more apps, first party and third party apps adopt this design. So Google and Apple finally decided on a 4K codec. So that means we have 4K YouTube on the iPad, iPhone, Apple TV, whatever. And I'm now filming these videos in 4K. So that means you get to see my smiling face in 4K. So that's it for my walkthrough. Like I mentioned, I'm gonna have a bunch of other videos coming out really soon, going into a lot more detail on specific features. So if there's something you would like to see more of, let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know what your guys' favorite iPadOS 14 feature is in the comments as well. Thank you for watching. Hit the thumbs up button if you like this video. Subscribe if you'd like to see more iPad content and have a great day.